if you're really a master of your own time, if you're really going to seek agency, then you can tell people you're taking the day off with no apology and no excuse. Business is messy and unpredictable. Sometimes lonely. So lonely. So lonely. <laughs> and inspiration can often come from really weird places. We pick up where the bullet point blogs and the highlight reels leave off. We start with the stories. So here's my story. I was going back and forth with a client of mine the other day about when we were going to discuss this issue that uh, he had contacted me about. And I suggested, well, why don't we uh, talk on Monday? Because this was late Friday afternoon. And I got back an email that initially made me just kind of sit back in my chair a minute and look at it and go, huh. <laughs> because what he said to me over that email was, I can't Monday because Monday's my day off. Now, I know that this particular client is in upstate New York. He's north of, of Syracuse. And New York is locked down. Mm -hmm. He's not going anywhere. He hasn't gone anywhere for months. Right. The guy is in his house and like, you know, most of the world. And so the way he chose to say that, it's my day off really gave me pause. And it did for a couple reasons. The first one is obvious. Like, I know he's not going to Disney. Right. You know? <laughs> he's not, it's not like I can't reach him. Right. It's not like those emails that you get autoresponders that say, hey, I'm going to be over here. And my email is sporadic. Limited or, access to email, which is always such email. a farce. You know, it's like you get it on your phone and you right. always have your phone. <laughs> right. But, but here, I knew he was going to be in exactly the same room where right. he would be located on Wednesday when we would be discussing this issue. Right, right. Um, and so the second reason I sat back is because I thought, that's right. Just because we're at home, we're on lockdown or, or shelter in place, whatever you want to call it, doesn't negate the need to take a day off. No, if anything, as we have pointed out in a couple past episodes, I, I think it heightens the need to have some like contrasted time, some distinction of like, today is not a day. You know, if you're, if you, if you see the video of us recording, like that is my bed right there behind us. I roll out of bed into this chair. <laughs> I sit here almost all day long until usually until like three 30 or four. And at that point I'm just done. Um, I take some kind of break, but then often I come back and do more. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so what 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 he was saying, you know, I I thought about taking a day off and the fact, well, my initial thought was, how do I actually tell clients if I say, hey, look, no, I'm sorry, I'm on vacation that week. And they're yeah, like, Yeah, because didn't you, didn't you, didn't we have this conversation, but like from your perspective, like two weeks ago, like you were like, yeah. I kind of need a day, but what am I gonna say? I can't answer your call. Right. I'm I, in the living I, room. Absolutely. <laughs> this is so we're sitting here in May. <laughs> And this is the time when I start thinking to myself, um, when's the last time you took a vacation? Yeah. Because I don't take one every summer and right. I'm not really good. I'm not one of those people that that has my vacations planned. Like I know that in 2023, right. I'm going to Hong Kong. Or right. I just, Correct. Yeah. I'm just, I normally, Nikki and I both are normally like, huh, we haven't gotten away for a while. Maybe we ought to plan something. And so I sit here in May and I think, I really do need to take some time off because I'm thinking of, I'm feeling burned out or whatever. And then I thought, I everybody knows I'm not going anywhere. Right. But I'm well, eminently so, reachable. But this is but this is the funny thing. As I've said a number of times, one thing that I have sort of enjoyed about this period of time is I think we're surfacing all these like social constructs that may or may not be useful. I mean, the fact that so many people throw in that. And I have limited access to email. No, you won't. You're not hiking the Appalachian <laughs> Trail. And even if you're hiking the Appalachian Trail, like there is almost, I, 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 my family is from West Virginia. I can tell you that most of the places in, even in rural, you know, there's very few places that don't have cell service, at least to some degree. Um, so that says to me that we have this unspoken and, and probably unexamined rule that says, like you have to have a reason that you have to you you have to be unavailable for reasons beyond your control in order 
to say, I'm not going to answer emails today. Well, but that's, and that, that gets to the conversation that I had with him about that, because I was remarking on this. And I, when I finally got a hold of him, I was like, hey, Brian, I have to tell you, we were just laughing about this. It really took me by surprise when you said you were taking the day off. And I thought that's really good that you've, you've blocked out that time because a lot of people feel that they can't do that when you're shelter in place, when you're not going somewhere. And he goes, he kind of laughed and he goes, oh no, no, my hours were actually cut down. I was told I have to, I mean, otherwise I'd be totally available. I was told I couldn't work on Monday. <laughs> I really would. I didn't mean to put you off. And he launched into this litany of like, no, no, uh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not taking, right. you know, I'm not like apologies. He's, he's a regional practice leader in a large company. And he was just told, Hey, because we need um, you to work construction is limited in the state we're we're cutting it back. And then he backtracked on what I thought was really a good for you, man, <laughs> reserving, you know, <laughs> preserving your own mental health. And he's like, oh, no, no, that's not what I'm doing. But doesn't that speak to how deeply that that thread goes? I mean, had you had you come back at him with any kind of criticism or like, come on, dude, we really got to get this done. And he backed it up. That makes perfect sense. But when you when you throw someone a compliment or admiration yeah. for a choice and they they backhand swipe it away with, oh, no, 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 I wasn't doing a good thing. I was I was like I was forced to. That says to me this is like it's so it's so deeply rooted in what we feel like we're allowed to need or do or want. And I, you know, I've been having this feeling the past, you know, the past week or so, you know, and it's probably because I haven't been. I mean, this is actually a whole other episode. Last week on Monday and Tuesday, I, I instituted this little policy where um, once an hour I was getting up and doing this little like exercise thing. So that I, it, it literally takes 90 seconds, but it's just something that gets me moving. Um, I was drinking like plenty of water. Like I had all these little like, let's really take good care of your mental state throughout the day. And I felt yeah. fantastic. Monday and Tuesday, like I had so much more energy. I was able to go further in the day without just feeling like I hit this brick wall at like three o'clock. And I was like, this really works. And then Wednesday, I apparently just forgot that that was a thing and that it was being really helpful. And I just stopped doing it. And Wednesday and Thursday were miserable. <laughs> and I was just like wiped out. So I've been feeling kind of wiped out. But I... I, but there's a lot going on this week. And I was like, how can I, how can I say, like, we have nothing to, I'm making air quotes, hide behind other than I just want or need to take a day. And, yeah. and I would preach from the biggest soapbox I have that that's not a problem. You should just say like, I need a day. And yet here I am feeling like I can't say there's a lot going on this week. I can't say, sorry, I can't be there for that. I just right. need to walk but into if, the other room and not talk you to had, you. If you had plane tickets and the wheels were leaving the tarmac, yes. then then okay. But by the way, before we leave that uh, point that you just made, I'm wondering if as a service to our readers, you can actually post your 90 second exercise routine in uh, in the Facebook group. <laughs> I will. I have two. It's, it's actually, I did one for the, uh, because I am, I classically overestimate how often I will do this. So I, I created one for like the even hours and one for the odd hours. So oh, that nice. each hour I did like a different little thing, but yeah, I did a little Tabata. It, interestingly, just as a quick side note, um, side note to the side note of the side note that I started with. Uh, I was it also developed because I was reading about this thing called like greasing the wheel or something like that, that if you want to be able to do like push-ups or pull-ups or a heavier thing in addition to working on that skill set to like max out right. you, and I don't know if this is true I've only read it and I haven't done research beyond this one dude who was talking about it on a thing but they said if you do it a few times like a bunch of times a day just like two or three or four of them that the muscle it's not muscle memory exactly but just sort of getting into that flow of it also like will benefit you along the way so essentially like yeah. if you do three pull-ups 10 times a day, you did 30 pull-ups in the day. They don't all have to be right at once and it builds, right. builds that muscle. So it was kind of combining those two things together. But yeah, I'll post those in the Facebook group. Okay. All now, right. what were we talking about? Well, we were talking about what the terminology that <laughs> See, you See, I need a break. When I wander off <laughs> like this, it means I need a break. <laughs> but, but the terminology you, use is, or you used was, if I didn't have something to hide behind. Right. And I'm right. almost embarrassed to say that, like, I, cause I know I don't need to hide like that. 
I, I shouldn't feel like I have to have something to hide behind. No, them. you're That's a grown feel. person. You have your own agency. You're, <laughs> you're not the boss say, of me. <laughs> you're not the boss of me. You're allowed to say, hey, you know what? I'm not doing that today. Today's not that day. And yet it's it's the same reason that I own the company. And if I come in later than anybody else, I feel the need to say, oh, what well, you know, I I had this call beforehand, you. you know, and I was doing this and then I have to, and you know, I was at the office. I have this need to to oh, yeah. explain. And they're like, dude, you your your name is on the door. I whatever. Yes. Yes. And, and I actually have a really interesting story about that that I'll tell in one second. Um, but this, it, this is re- this experience, especially for me, I feel like is, is just fascinatingly indicative of how deep this weird rule we have runs because I'm a huge proponent of playing hooky in a strategic way. I think we even did an episode on it way, way, yep. way back when. Um, there are days where I just, I can tell that I could put full energy in and I'm going to get one third to maybe one half output on the other side of it because I'm just not running like my the print heads of my, <laughs> my head need cleaned. You know? yep. <laughs> and um, so I'll take the day and go, that's how I ended up buying my guitar one day. I was like, I need a day. And I just went and hung out at the guitar store and try, and I came back the next day raring to go. Therefore, I thought I was someone who feels very confident just taking my time. Well, what I'm realizing now is, yes, I give myself permission to do that. But when I do that, no one else knows that I'm deciding, you know, I have space in my day. I just decide to use it in a particular right. way. That's between me and me. <laughs> And for me to take a day now, I have to say to somebody else, I'm taking a day and, and therefore apparently I'm not so bold about it. That is at the crux of this issue and why it fascinates me. So years and years and years and years ago, I was working with a guy um, and we were doing like time strategy. That's how far back this was when I was doing a lot more, not time management, productivity stuff, but strategically, how are you using your time as an owner? what's important, what's not. And interestingly, um, he had, he had three sons and the middle, and he like coached the older boys thing. And then he did something for the younger, but like the middle boy, he, he couldn't, because of the times of things, he couldn't coach the things. And anyway, for just a whole stack of reasons, it sort of felt like the middle kid was always getting the short shaft, which is, I know a classic cliche. cliche. I know it really is, but it was, that's how it was working out. And so it, that is why it came up that he felt like it was really important that on a few days or like one day a week, I think it was, he leave at like 4.30. I'm not talking two. I'm not talking noon. I'm talking 4.30. Or maybe he had to leave at four to be somewhere at 4.30 to attend, just simply attend this kid's whatever, lacrosse, soccer, whatever. The middle school kid or the middle, middle school kid. Because he felt like there was, he felt like that tank needed some yeah. filling or whatever. And, um, so we had this whole conversation and we'll call him Bob. And I said, Bob, like you, you, I know for certain that you attend like three, four five networking things a week. Sometimes, you know, minimum two or three, I, I get emails from you Saturday night at 10 o'clock. Like, do you, when you're doing this mental math of the hours you're, you know, you're in, are you counting those as well? Cause you're looking, you know, the math seems really off here. And we, we were toe to toe back and forth. And then he, he almost kind of yelled at me and he goes, I was like, I was like, tell me why you can't leave. This seems so important. Why can't you walk out the door at four? And he goes, because I'm the owner of the company, Jody. And I was like, that is why you can leave Bob. <laughs> like, but, but, but right. I get both of both parts of that conversation. I totally get both parts of it. But here's the fascinating part. Months and months and months later, um, I ran into him and um, because we didn't meet in person very often. And I ran into him and he grabbed my arm and he sort of drug me off to the side. So he goes, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, I've been doing, I've been leaving. He's like, I've been meaning to email you. Um, I've been leaving and going to this kid's thing. And he said, it has changed our entire family dynamic. Hmm. He said, everything got better. It was like this one little thread that he's like, it's just such an insignificant thing. He said, but it has made such an enormous difference. And I think about that story all the time about our perceived agency over our time and how falsely we construct weird rules around it that just 
they're they're completely <laughs> fabricated. Well, you know, but but I think it's a huge thing with um, the pushback when people were saying to me, you know, just as you said to to Bob, you know, you're the owner. Your you know your name is on the door. That's why you can leave, and that's why I thought I couldn't. But but when and they're people, both right. You're not going to show up at ten and leave at two every day. Like, right. like you're not you do have a responsibility. That, yeah, you're not going to set an example of shirking your responsibilities or or taking your job lightly or in a cavalier fashion. But but by saying your name is on the door, what strikes me is that at this moment, right now, all across the country, or the world, really, everybody's name is on the door. Right. Mm. They they all have their own agency. In other words. When when my attorneys are at home, their name is on the door, you know, because that's oh their... oh gotcha gotcha. I was like, I'm not following your metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that means that if one of my attorneys decides that two o'clock to three o'clock is time to walk the dog or or you know read a novel or watch TV or their show is on or whatever, right. they can do that because their name is on the door. They get mm -hmm. they have complete agency at this point. We 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 do and and i can certainly i mean i've had no problems the other day i had a couple hours in between some other things and i went and organized my spice rack <laughs> so like you you can fixation with the spice rack i think but it's come up a couple times because it's it has a come up a couple slightly times. longer term project but um it's so satisfying though because the spices drive me crazy it's it's i'm no martha stewart i don't have to have everything like you know pristinely Pinterest, Instagrammy organized, but there are certain things that drive me bonkers when I'm in the middle of something, you know, our spices are kind of low in this drawer thing. And so you're looking down at the top of them. So you have to like lift it up, look, lift it up, look, and then you lose track of which ones you've looked and you know, it's in there and you can't find it. And, um, so it drives me bonkers. So I did, I did organize it. And I'm now so you actually coach a lot of business owners on how to prioritize the things that matter, <laughs> right? And it's the spice rack that's driving you nuts. <laughs> so, so, okay. So let's go there. It, but that's, but you, but you missed the point that, that, that matters. It, that matters. Now is everything else in my kitchen, like exactly organized and put where, heck no. But that one, it, like this redundant thing, it mattered because it would irritate me. Like it would be frustrating that I couldn't find what I needed. And, you know, so I, I would argue that it did matter because well, but, but actually that's that is the larger point because it's not i can i can laugh at you because i reserve the right to mock you for virtually anything <laughs> however in all seriousness it's not the larger point is it's not my right to tell you what matters to you exactly. it's just like if you're upset about something it's it, the, the exact wrong thing for me to say is, well, that's no big deal because it obviously is to you, right? And you have the right to determine what's a big deal to you. Um, right. But at the same time, I do. I no, do. It, no, it's funny. And, and I don't, um, I don't, it, it is funny. Like when, when I was doing that, that work, I, it was fascinating to me to find out what people assigned value to with their time. And I, I there was a, a woman who I was talking to, who I was trying to get her to outsource some of her stuff because she was a mom and ran a business. And I, re, you know, to me that some of the domestic stuff is the easiest stuff to outsource. You can get somebody to come in and clean or do some laundry or whatever. Like that's a, that's an easy win in my perspective. And she was holding really tightly to that. And a lot of times when people are holding tightly to something that isn't the highest and best use of their time, it's because of a should. Like, well, I should do that or I should. And that's what I was really mining for. But it was how fascinating. It the outside mm -hmm. world and all the rest of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm supposed to blah, blah, blah. But but like, and, but you can tell when they talk about it, it, it comes they like, well, blah, 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 you know, they use like an Eeyore voice to talk about it. And that says to me, like, this is, we can find a better way to get around this. She did not use that voice when she was talking about some particularly just mind numbing housework that I was like, oh my God. But she actually sounded sort of lit up. So I asked her about it and she said, I know it sounds silly, but like these, these like three things to me feel like they're showing like love and care. Like it feels to me like I am caring for the, the kids. Right. She was talking about like ironing sheets, which well, but I just like, I, I can't get behind ironing sheets. Like that feels to me like the most made up 
annoying thing. But to her, like creating that space where you could slide into bed on freshly ironed sheets was an experience that she wanted to create for people. And I can understand that. Like I Actually, can- I, I yeah. do have to go on, on one little aside that I never thought I would discuss um, with anybody because there was no <laughs> need for it. But my- yeah, here we are. My yet yeah, here we are. So um, well before we got married, Nikki had a conversation with my mother and my mother explained, was just not telling her what she should do, but just was telling her that, yeah, well, I ironed the sheets and I ironed um, everybody's underwear. And no. uh, uh, you grew yeah. up in an ironed underwear house? I did. Oh, wow. And I remember very clearly Nikki looking at her going, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I was I was trying hard not to just start bursting out laughing when you said my mom was telling Nikki like what she should and I was like oh oh I would pay cold hard yeah. cash to watch yeah. that conversation but go you down. Know, fairness, and, and I've talked about my mom. my mom uh, was a professional she's retired now but she was a, a professor and then a, an attorney and she wasn't giving a speech to Nikki about oh to keep a good home and to keep your husband happy and to be a good wife you have to she wasn't doing this she was really just talking kind of about what she would do and why she would do this and, and all that stuff. And she said, well, I got up early because I wanted to iron the sheets. And, and Nikki was like, wait, hold, hard stop. You yeah. iron? Yes, I ironed the sheets. I ironed the underwear. I ironed all that stuff. And Nikki was just laughing, saying, hey, I'm not doing that. So it's yeah. been a, a, a joke every once in a while. I'll ask Nikki if she, now that she has a little bit of time, if she could iron some sheets, that would be great. Yeah, and your underwear. Like, yeah, I feel like underwear. your underwear needs yeah, to be That would be ironed. great. Oh my gosh. So, he, so, we should just call this episode Random Tangents. <laughs> 42 random things that don't tie together, but they do all come back to like agency over your time and effort and whatnot. And this one, I actually, as it was happening, I was like, this is kind of like a leadership metaphor. Maybe we should do a, an episode on it. It does kind of tie in. So we, I, I'm mostly, we, we've divvied up laundry. My, my kids are 13 and 17, so they do their own laundry. And so for most part, this is like off, but, but we've been kind of throwing it all together and there's been loads that have everybody's stuff in it. And then sometimes everyone's doing their own laundry and whatever. I, I get, I hate like un uh, like turning things right side out. And a lot of people like take stuff off and throw it in the hamper wrong side out. They, and so I'm like, can't you put you like, un, you know, do your jeans the other way or under your shirt. And then it occurred to me as I was taking a bunch of stuff out of the dryer, wrong side out that I just, I just folded it up and put it in their basket like that. And then they're the ones who turned it wrong side out. They can turn it right side out to put it back on again, that it's not the assumption that it is my job to right side it before I, you know, I'm not displaying it in a gap store. <laughs> like, it's right. their shirt. They didn't turn it the other way. It has now been washed. I stuck it in their box for them. They can, you know, transferring that back to them. To, I say solve that problem, but maybe to them, it's not a problem. So yeah, and and I like the the idea of just bringing it back, you know, to transfer something over to somebody else. And in a larger sense, what this reminds me is, I had like most of most employers, I had set the time, so I had set you know basically nine to five or or whatever, and they had to the employees. I took that on to set the time, and the employees had to abide by that to a larger extent. And then I started to realize, no, I could transfer that responsibility to them. However, yeah. they wanted to manage their day. If it wasn't a big deal for them to come in at, at 10, but they needed to stay till seven in order to finish their work, as long as the customer, the customers or clients are served, that was fine. So I started trans putting more things in my employee's basket. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this shelter in place, this remote work environment for us has really started to make me think what else, how else can the bat, the things in the baskets be divvied up? Mm -hmm. you know, and that includes who's available when. Um, people don't have to really turn in a form at HR to say at two to four, I'm playing with my dog right. or, or whatever, <laughs> right? They're, they're just at home. And um, I also don't think that because I've made it possible for people to be, quote, in the office 24-7 because their office is down the hall and we have all the remote technology, um, it's still in their basket to figure out when they actually want to be available. And that includes mm -hmm. two to four playing with the dog, and it includes I'm going to take um, a long weekend and do nothing but sit in the living room and watch 
the latest Amazon Prime special. You know, well, and and I will. I I was getting I got quite feisty last week with one leadership team I'm working with on Friday because they were all getting a little fried and I was getting a little fried and and we were we were we were running on fumes as my dad always said and it showed in our sort of circular conversations and I wasn't even doing a good job of facilitating the conversations cuz I was running on fumes and um and th- the thing is the reason I'm such a fan of playing hooky and taking breaks is, is not even some like self care kind of thing. Like there's so much neuroscience behind what your brain is capable of doing. And the reason that I put in those hourly breaks is your, is, is partly from the neuroscience standpoint that your brain needs these little punctuation marks in between things, it needs that contrast. It, it's it's made for sprints, not marathons. It's not meant to just plow all day long, every day without breaks. And 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 as I said to them, I said, oh, you know, I'll be blunt. You are less valuable to the company when you are exhausted. It, it's that simple. You are you are not as valuable if you are running to the ground. And so we really need people to take breaks and to take a day off. Um, you know, I, I still think it would feel really weird right now to say like, I'm on vacation all of next week. Right. Right. <laughs> like it's, I'll be in the backyard. Um, but, but I'd love to hear the stories of people who decided to say that. I, I do. No, I want to, I want to hear about, and I think it's a little bit easier for some people, you know, what I have heard happen, because I'm seeing very few people take days off. Um, and when they do, even I'm like, oh, interesting. Like if you get the auto responder, it says I won't be available tomorrow. You're like what? <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, what I have seen a little bit of is, um, you know, people who already had, like if you, if they were already, they were booked to go on a vacation next week and that vacation is that vacation's not happening. And I have seen a few people say, you know, I'm still going to take the week off and, and that, that no one is bad at this is what this is what's fascinating about our goofy brain. No one's bad at an eyelash at that. You're like, oh, you know, you already had it planned. Right. The actual activity fell through, but you'd already like staked your claim on that time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You go take that time. Whereas if I just said, you know what, next week I'm gonna be out all week, I honestly feel like I'm a big one on don't assume that other people would feel that way. But based on the way I'm even and you reacted, even though we okay. both are on the other side of it too, I think I might be like, oh, really? You're just gonna. I know you're right there. Like, <laughs> you know, but, but I admire that because, you know, it goes back to the old expression. I guess we'll, we can, uh, we have to wrap this up, but it goes back to the old expression that the only person who is truly free is someone who can turn down a dinner invitation without excuse, mm. you know? Yeah. And I think about that. The only, you know, if you're really a master of your own time, if you're really going to seek agency, then you can tell people you're taking the day off with no apology and no excuse. <laughs> So that's our story. But the discussion doesn't have to end here. No, it does not. In fact, we don't want it to. No, we don't. (laughs) That is why we actually have our private Facebook group. Which we started to make sure that we could get your comments, your rants, your thoughts. Your stories. Your stories. You can find links to that group as well as show notes and links to subscribe via email and how to find us just about anywhere you can possibly find podcasts at SoHere'sMyStory.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at SHMS Podcast. And since we know it takes a village. Yes, it does. <laughs> we'd like to thank our village, our super talented, incredibly patient team. And occasionally snarky Ooh, team. Yeah, but in the best of ways. In the best Lovingly of ways. Snarky. Yes. <laughs> Good mockery. So, so a huge shout out to the people who actually help us produce our show. Uh, first, our sound engineer, Tom Hansen. Thanks to Christy Schmier for our brilliant show notes and all the other fantastic writing she does for us. And to Taylor Mathauer for doing just a little bit of everything. Including wrangling us. Including wrangling us. (laughs) Which is no small feat. No, it's not. This is Jody Hume. And I'm Elliot Wagenheim. And you've been listening to So Here's My Story.